So I'm delighted today to actually be talking to Alex Kass. Um, Alex is a, a labs fellow at Accenture Labs, and he works on the intersection between IT, human learning, and performance. He has had numerous efforts with a broad theme of learning and knowledge-based performance support technologies. You're known as many misters of Accenture Labs. Some people say AI, some people say digital experiences. All we know is that you're a huge part of Accenture Labs, so I'm delighted to be talking with you today. Thanks, Bob. So, Alex, you spend much of your time looking at how AI, machine learning, and new technologies are changing the way we work, interact, and play. With the pace of change and innovation, it must be a challenge to forecast so far out into the future. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I don't really think of what we do as forecasting so much. I mean, it's true that there's some amount of mapping into the future that we need to do. We need to think about what's going on now, what's emerging, and where will that take us. But to a large extent, what, what I see us doing is trying to invent the future more than predict it. So my team will take a look at a new technology that's coming out, usually from one of our technology partners or some startups that we are uh, considering partnering with. And then what we'll do is we'll say, okay, well, if this is really going to mature the way the people working on it think it's going to, or we think it's going to, what are the potential impacts that can make and what do we need to invent to make sure that that technology can actually have those impacts? That's what we spend most of our time exploring uh, with our internal partners, with our clients, and in the R&D that we do. Uh, so. Uh, recently, we've been looking at the topic of human-robot teaming. Mm -hmm. okay. We don't build robots here. Uh, we don't really even do R&D on building robots here at Accenture Labs. What we do is thinking about what robots are emerging now, how is the area of robotics changing, and what impacts are going to have on business, what are we going to have to solve in order to make those robots useful. Okay. Example, the, the uh, Traditional use of robots in industrial processes have been very large, boring robots that do a very useful thing over, one simple thing over and over. What's emerging now from a number of vendors are much smaller, more affordable, more autonomous mobile robots that are capable of working more intimately with people. So the issue there is going to be, though, it's going to mean redesigning the processes that the human robot teams work in and thinking about how are the humans and robots going to coordinate effectively as they execute a plan, as they change that plan, how will the mindset have to shift from this is a tool that I use to this is almost like a teammate that I'm working with and what new sort of communication and coordination problems will have to be solved to do that. Interesting because in this beautiful um, floor that Accenture Labs concentrates on, there's a whole room of robots. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming that what you're doing with those is you're interacting to see how the processes can actually adapt. The interesting thing about the, the robot work is that it brings several different teams to the table. So there's one team that's looking at the detailed sort of system architecture related to how robots will work and how they'll be controlled. There's another team looking at the AI aspects of how do we make the robots smarter. And then there's our team that's thinking about how will humans and robots be working together. And really it's by bringing all those different areas of expertise from the digital experience side, the AI side, and the system side together that we're able to bring something to the table that none of the robot vendors are necessarily doing on their own. Since you've been at Accenture Labs, which um, has been a while now, have you seen the progression speed up of robotics in a way that, or is it just the layman who is now starting to understand more about AI and more about robotics? Well, I don't want to overfocus on robotics also. So I think we've seen uh, speed of technology change uh, accelerate, you know. Uh, across a whole broad range of areas that affect how people work, live, and play. We're interested, for instance, in new ways that people can experience things before they're even built with virtual and augmented reality, and new ways that people can work together through new digital collaboration technologies where you can even, say, shape a team 
uh, of strangers that have never met before from all over the world, bring them together to work on something, have them work effectively through technology that enables them to form an effective team uh, and, and work together, even though they may not even be ever physically meet or even be um, uh, awake at the same time. So, you know, when, I, when we think about work getting done, we think about it in terms of individuals, teams, and organizations. And at the team level, two interesting things, as we were talking about robots before, your next teammate may be a robot, or it may be another person that you've never met before and that you need to be able to get to work effectively with uh, quickly and, and have, have a good time inventing and being imaginative together, even though you come from different cultures and different places and different work styles. So what technology trends do you feel will have the most impact in the future? Well, again, it, it, that, that's such a broad question. I'll just narrow it down for now to what will have the most impact on the way we work. Great. And again, within that, I think there's a, a lot of different technologies that rather than focus on one, I'd sort of section it off into, again, that I think the way people work has to be thought of at the individual level, the team level, and the organizational level. So at the individual level, I think it's clear that we're seeing um, uh, intelligent assistance mm -hmm. becoming um, more and more helpful. So automated assistance like the ones you have at home, uh, you know, with your smart speakers, we're going to start seeing more and more of that play an important role at work as well. So that they'll be magnifying individual workers' capabilities by giving them just-in-time coaching, by helping them solve problems that might take them a long time to solve on their own. At the team level, I think it gets really exciting in terms of tools that help teams work more effectively together. Your teams are going to start to include intelligent assistants and connected workers all coordinating effectively together. So when we're carrying out some work process like prototyping a new product, um, there will be coordination. I'll be working, I'll probably be coordinating with other workers that are not physically around me through mm -hmm. communication channels that um, we like uh, augmented reality and, 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 and virtual reality. I'll also be coordinating with intelligent systems that'll be doing background research for me while I'm working on something else with robots that are bringing me the materials that I need and, um, and helping me with tasks that are maybe either too dangerous or too time consuming for it to be mm -hmm. worth me doing by myself. So there's a lot going on at that team level. And then at the organizational level, I think it's really exciting to think about how um, we can really have uh, organizations that draw on resources in very much more dynamic ways than they do now. What even a team is, is getting reinvented. You may have an organization where each project is a completely different configuration of talent that perfectly manage, matches that product project, and that talent may come from all different corners of the organization or even outside the organization. So in a way, you know, the trends, um because we see it this way too, the trends in the future aren't necessarily technology related, it's about um, collaboration and crucial skills of communication um, and really understanding how AI or any new technologies can actually enhance your work versus replacing it or setting you backwards. I think it's always, there's always a mix when all the changes that, that come to good effect always come from some important new technology that enables a new way of be, be, work being done, but then also a deep understanding of the social and economic and business drivers that are, 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 are behind that as well. So a technology that no one will use, and believe me, I've spent time researching things like that. I mean, every, many technologies are very exciting in principle, um, but they just don't have either at the individual team or organizational level, they just don't mesh. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the problems need to be solved at many, many levels that way. With the, the new ways of collaboration with human and machines um, and global human virtual workforce teams, you're also, you talk a lot about the indiv individualization and personalization of what you're able to do through um, 
product design or work design systems or process systems. And I think that can be nothing but sticky. I mean, that's going to be very useful for people. Um, one of the things that we've been talking about too is just service and um, what is that going to look like. And it's, it's, when I speak about that to other members of our team who aren't working on this, they literally, they'll turn around and say, you've just blown my mind because we aren't thinking that way yet. Mm -hmm. Are you finding that working in Accenture Labs that sometimes you forget that you know a lot more than what other people really will understand? Um, I think it goes both ways. Uh, every time we meet uh, people, I always have the feeling that uh, I can learn from every single person in that room and hopefully every person in that room can learn something from me as well. Uh, when we meet with clients, for instance, I may know a lot more than the client about some aspect of technology that we've been deeply focusing on, but then the client is going to know a lot more than me about how their current business works, what their customers are like, and so forth. And so I, see, I don't see it as we are the beacons shining light on, on a, a dark world. I see it as we're developing a unique perspective. Most of the work we've done is done in, in, in collaboration with other organizations. Mm -hmm. And that's really a big difference between, other re with, between Accenture Labs and a lot of other research organizations. Isolation to be able to make the research pure is not what we're about. We're about sort of confronting other realities and then seeing how that impacts what the, what the research directions will be. The, the broad trend is, I think, that in general, technology, while it's going to play a bigger and bigger role in our lives, I think will become in many ways less visible, less obtrusive. Um, one, one side of that that we're looking at right now is uh, in terms of smart materials. So this is a new area for labs that we're just starting to explore. Um, it, it, labs is generally grown out of people with computer science backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is really about material science, and so we're, we're collaborating and partnering with uh, universities and companies that are really have expertise in material science and seeing how is that going to mesh with information technology. When you start looking at smart materials, you're talking about things like garments where you're not adding some big new thing to it that's this obtrusive band that's going to, but the, the material itself is going to become smart. Like when we talk about customization, imagine I have a jacket, for instance, that as I start to perspire, it ventilates automatically, or when it's time for me, when it knows that I'm about to go home to a house that I keep colder than the office, it proactively kind of gets more insulative, things like that. Material I wish that happened like, today. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Material science is likely to progress, I think, much more rapidly in the next 20 years than in the last 20 years, it's been accelerating dramatically. It may even accelerate more rapidly than information technology. The applications are going to depend on fusing the two. You've got the material that can be new kinds of unobtrusive sensors, new kinds of unobsess uh, unobtrusive actuators that make change, but they're going to be controlled by some intelligence. And so what I'm excited about is bringing AI together with these advances in other areas uh, to, to make useful things. No, I, I am too. I really am. Well, I could talk with you for a long time. This was really excellent. Thank you. And now we've got a few more of your team members who are coming in. Sounds good. And thank you very much, Alex. Thanks, Claire.